Astrophysical X-ray sources are astronomical objects with physical properties which result in the emission of X-rays. There are a number of types of astrophysical objects which emit X-rays, from galaxy clusters, through black holes in active galactic nuclei to galactic objects such as supernova remnants, stars, and binary stars containing a white dwarf cataclysmic variable stars and super-soft X-ray sources, neutron star or black hole X-ray binaries. Some solar system bodies emit X-rays, the most notable being the Moon, although most of the X-ray brightness of the Moon arises from reflected solar X-rays. A combination of many unresolved X-ray sources is thought to produce the observed X-ray background. The X-ray continuum can arise from bremsstrahlung, either magnetic or ordinary coulomb, black body radiation, synchrotron radiation, inverse Compton scattering of lower energy photons by relativistic electrons, knock-on collisions of fast protons with atomic electrons, and atomic recombination, with or without additional electron transitions. Furthermore, celestial entities in space are discussed as celestial X-ray sources. The origin of all observed astronomical X-ray sources is in, near to, or associated with a coronal cloud or gas at coronal cloud temperatures for however long or brief a period. <laughs> <laughs> Galaxy clusters Clusters of galaxies are formed by the merger of smaller units of matter, such as galaxy groups or individual galaxies. The infalling material which contains galaxies, gas and dark matter gains kinetic energy as it falls into the cluster's gravitational potential well. The infalling gas collides with gas already in the cluster and is shock heated to between 107 and 108 K depending on the size of the cluster. This very hot gas emits X-rays by thermal bremsstrahlung emission, and line emission from metals in astronomy, metals often means all elements except hydrogen and helium. The galaxies and dark matter are collisionless and quickly become virialized, orbiting in the cluster potential well. At a statistical significance of 8 sigma, it was found that the spatial offset of the center of the total mass from the center of the baryonic mass peaks cannot be explained with an alteration of the gravitational force law. <laughs> Quasars A quasi-stellar radio source quasar is a very energetic and distant galaxy with an active galactic nucleus AGN. QS00836 plus 7107 is a quasi-stellar object QSO that emits baffling amounts of radio energy. This radio emission is caused by electrons spiraling thus accelerating along magnetic fields producing cyclotron or synchrotron radiation. These electrons can also interact with visible light emitted by the disk around the AGN or the black hole at its center. These photons accelerate the electrons, which then emit X and gamma radiation via Compton and inverse Compton scattering. On board the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory CGRO is the Burst and Transient Source Experiment BATSE, which detects in the 20 keV to 8 MeV range. QS00836 plus 7107 or 4C71.07 was detected by BATSE as a source of soft gamma rays and hard X-rays. What BATSE has discovered is that it can be a soft gamma ray source," McCullough said. QS00836 plus 7107 is the faintest and most distant object to be observed in soft gamma rays. It has already been observed in gamma rays by the Energetic Gamma Ray Experiment Telescope also aboard the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. Topic: Safe at galaxies. 
Safet galaxies are a class of galaxies with nuclei that produce spectral line emission from highly ionized gas. They are a subclass of active galactic nuclei AGN, and are thought to contain supermassive black holes. <laughs> X-ray bright galaxies The following early type galaxies NGCs have been observed to be X-ray bright due to hot gaseous coronae, 315, 1316, 1332, 1395, 2563, 4374, 4382, 4406, 4472, 4594, 4636, 4649, and 5128. The X-ray emission can be explained as thermal bremsstrahlung from hot gas 0.5 to 1.5 keV. Topic: <laughs> Ultraluminous X-ray sources. Ultraluminous X-ray sources ULXs are point-like, non-nuclear X-ray sources with luminosities above the Eddington limit of 3 times 1032 W for a 20 m black hole. Many ULXs show strong variability and may be black hole binaries. To fall into the class of intermediate mass black holes IMBHs, their luminosities, thermal disk emissions, variation timescales, and surrounding emission line nebulae must suggest this. However, when the emission is beamed or exceeds the Eddington limit, the ULX may be a stellar mass black hole. The nearby spiral galaxy NGC 1313 has two compact ULXs, X1 and X2. For X1 the X-ray luminosity increases to a maximum of 3 times 1033 W, exceeding the Eddington limit, and enters a steep power law state at high luminosities more indicative of a stellar mass black hole, whereas X2 has the opposite behavior and appears to be in the hard X-ray state of an IMBH. <laughs> black holes. Black holes give off radiation because matter falling into them loses gravitational energy which may result in the emission of radiation before the matter falls into the event horizon. The infalling matter has angular momentum, which means that the material cannot fall in directly, but spins around the black hole. This material often forms an accretion disk. Similar luminous accretion disks can also form around white dwarfs and neutron stars, but in these the infalling gas releases additional energy as it slams against the high-density surface with high speed. In case of a neutron star, the infall speed can be a sizable fraction of the speed of light. In some neutron star or white dwarf systems, the magnetic field of the star is strong enough to prevent the formation of an accretion disk. The material in the disk gets very hot because of friction, and emits X-rays. The material in the disk slowly loses its angular momentum and falls into the compact star. In neutron stars and white dwarfs, additional X-rays are generated when the material hits their surfaces. X-ray emission from black holes is variable, varying in luminosity in very short timescales. The variation in luminosity can provide information about the size of the black hole. Topic: <inaudible> Supernova remnants (SNR). A type Iowa supernova is an explosion of a white dwarf in orbit around either another white dwarf or a red giant star. The dense white dwarf can accumulate gas donated from the companion. When the dwarf reaches the critical mass of 1.4 m, a thermonuclear explosion ensues. As each type Iowa shines with a known luminosity, type Iowa are called, "...standard candles", 
and are used by astronomers to measure distances in the universe. SN 2005K is the first type Iowa supernova detected in X-ray wavelengths, and it is much brighter in the ultraviolet than expected. <laughs> X-ray emission from stars Vela X-1 Vela X-1 is a pulsing, eclipsing high-mass X-ray binary system, associated with the Uhuru source 4U0900-40 and the supergiant star HD 77581. The X-ray emission of the neutron star is caused by the capture and accretion of matter from the stellar wind of the supergiant companion. Vela X-1 is the prototypical detached HMXB. <laughs> Hercules X-1 An intermediate mass X-ray binary IMXB is a binary star system where one of the components is a neutron star or a black hole. The other component is an intermediate mass star. Hercules X-1 is composed of a neutron star accreting matter from a normal star probably due to Roche lobe overflow. X-1 is the prototype for the massive X-ray binaries although it falls on the borderline, approximately 2 m, between high and low mass X-ray binaries. Scorpius X-1 The first extrasolar X-ray source was discovered on June 12, 1962. This source is called Scorpius X-1, the first X-ray source found in the constellation of Scorpius, located in the direction of the center of the Milky Way. Scorpius X-1 is some 9,000 light-years from Earth and after the Sun is the strongest X-ray source in the sky at energies below 20 keV. Its X-ray output is 2.3 times 1031 W, about 60,000 times the total luminosity of the Sun Scorpius X-1 itself is a neutron star. This system is classified as a low-mass X-ray binary LMXB. .The neutron star is roughly 1.4 solar masses, while the donor star is only 0.42 solar masses. Sun In the late 1930s, the presence of a very hot, tenuous gas surrounding the Sun was inferred indirectly from optical coronal lines of highly ionized species. In the mid-1940s radio observations revealed a radio corona around the Sun. After detecting X-ray photons from the Sun in the course of a rocket flight, T. Burnite wrote. The Sun is assumed to be the source of this radiation although radiation of wavelength shorter than 4 a would not be expected from theoretical estimates of black body radiation from the solar corona." And, of course, people have seen the solar corona in scattered visible light during solar eclipses. While neutron stars and black holes are the quintessential point sources of X-rays, all main-sequence stars are likely to have hot enough coronae to emit X-rays. A or F-type stars have at most thin convection zones and thus produce little coronal activity. Similar solar cycle-related variations are observed in the flux of solar X-ray and UV or EUV radiation. Rotation is one of the primary determinants of the magnetic dynamo, but this point could not be demonstrated by observing the Sun. The Sun's magnetic activity is in fact strongly modulated due to the 11 year magnetic spot cycle, but this effect is not directly dependent on the rotation period. Solar flares usually follow the solar cycle. Corona's F was launched on July 31, 2001 to coincide with the 23rd solar cycle maximum
The solar flare of October 29, 2003 apparently showed a significant degree of linear polarization greater than 70% in channels E2. Topic 40 to 60 Kevin E3 60 to 100 keV but only about 50% in E1 equals 20 to 40 keV in hard x-rays but other observations have generally only set upper limits Coronal loops form the basic structure of the lower corona and transition region of the sun these highly structured and elegant loops are a direct consequence of the twisted solar magnetic flux within the solar body. The population of coronal loops can be directly linked with the solar cycle, it is for this reason coronal loops are often found with sunspots at their footpoints. Coronal loops populate both active and quiet regions of the solar surface. The Yoko Soft X-ray Telescope (SXT) observed X-rays in the 0.25 to 4.0 keV range, resolving solar features to 2.5 arc seconds with a temporal resolution of 0.5 to 2 seconds. SXT was sensitive to plasma in the 2 to 4 mK temperature range, making it an ideal observational platform to compare with data collected from trace coronal loops radiating in the EUV wavelengths. Variations of solar flare emission in soft X-rays (10 to 130 nanometers) and EUV (26 to 34 nanometers) recorded on board Coronas F demonstrate for most flares observed by Coronas F in 2001 to 2003 UV radiation preceded X-ray emission by 1 to 10 minutes. Topic: White dwarfs. When the core of a medium mass star contracts, it causes a release of energy that makes the envelope of the star expand. This continues until the star finally blows its outer layers off. The core of the star remains intact and becomes a white dwarf. The white dwarf is surrounded by an expanding shell of gas in an object known as a planetary nebula. Planetary nebulae seem to mark the transition of a medium mass star from red giant to white dwarf. X ray images reveal clouds of multi million degree gas that have been compressed and heated by the fast stellar wind. Eventually, the central star collapses to form a white dwarf. For a billion or so years after a star collapses to form a white dwarf, it is white. Hot with surface temperatures of approximately 20,000 K. X ray emission has been detected from PG 1658 441, a hot, isolated, magnetic white dwarf, first detected in an Einstein IPC observation and later identified in an Exosat channel multiplier array observation. The broad band spectrum of this Da white dwarf can be explained as emission from a homogeneous, high gravity, pure hydrogen atmosphere with a temperature near 28,000 K. These observations of PG 1658 plus 441 support a correlation between temperature and helium abundance in white dwarf atmospheres. A super soft X ray source SSXS radiates soft X rays in the range of 0.09 to 2.5 keV. Super soft X rays are believed to be produced by steady nuclear fusion on a white dwarf surface of material pulled from a binary companion. This requires a flow of material sufficiently high to sustain the fusion. Real mass transfer variations may be occurring in VSGE similar to SSXS RXJ 0513.9-6951 as revealed by analysis of the activity of the SSXS VSGE where episodes of long low states occur in a cycle of approximately 400 days, RXJ 0648.0-4418 is an X-ray pulsator in the Crab Nebula. 
HD 49798 is a subdwarf star that forms a binary system with RxJ 0648.0-4418. The subdwarf star is a bright object in the optical and UV bands. The orbital period of the system is accurately known. Recent XMM Newton observations timed to coincide with the expected eclipse of the X-ray source allowed an accurate determination of the mass of the X-ray source at least 1.2 solar masses, establishing the X-ray source as a rare, ultra-massive white dwarf. Brown dwarfs According to theory, an object that has a mass of less than about 8% of the mass of the Sun cannot sustain significant nuclear fusion in its core. This marks the dividing line between red dwarf stars and brown dwarfs. The dividing line between planets and brown dwarfs occurs with objects that have masses below about 1% of the mass of the Sun, or 10 times the mass of Jupiter. These objects cannot fuse deuterium. <laughs> LP944–20 With no strong central nuclear energy source, the interior of a brown dwarf is in a rapid boiling, or convective state. When combined with the rapid rotation that most brown dwarfs exhibit, convection sets up conditions for the development of a strong, tangled magnetic field near the surface. The flare observed by Chandra from LP944-20 could have its origin in the turbulent magnetized hot material beneath the brown dwarf surface. A sub-surface flare could conduct heat to the atmosphere, allowing electric currents to flow and produce an X-ray flare, like a stroke of lightning. The absence of X-rays from LP944-20 during the non-flaring period is also a significant result. It sets the lowest observational limit on steady X-ray power produced by a brown dwarf star, and shows that coronas cease to exist as the surface temperature of a brown dwarf cools below about 2,500 degrees Celsius and becomes electrically neutral. TWA 5b Using NASA's Chandra X ray Observatory, scientists have detected X rays from a low mass brown dwarf in a multiple star system. This is the first time that a brown dwarf this close to its parent stars, Sun like stars TWA 5a, has been resolved in X rays. Our Chandra data show that the X-rays originate from the brown dwarf's coronal plasma which is some 3 million degrees Celsius," said Yoo Suboy of Chuo University in Tokyo. This brown dwarf is as bright as the Sun today in X-ray light, while it is 50 times less massive than the Sun," said Suboy. This observation, thus, raises the possibility that even massive planets might emit X-rays by themselves during their youth. <laughs> X-ray reflection Electric potentials of about 10 million volts, and currents of 10 million amps, a hundred times greater than the most powerful lightning bolts, are required to explain the auroras at Jupiter's poles, which are a thousand times more powerful than those on Earth. On Earth, auroras are triggered by solar storms of energetic particles, which disturb Earth's magnetic field. As shown by the swept-back appearance in the illustration, gusts of particles from the Sun also distort Jupiter's magnetic field, and on occasion produce auroras. Saturn's X-ray spectrum is similar to that of X-rays from the Sun indicating that Saturn's X-radiation is due to the reflection of solar X-rays by Saturn's atmosphere. The optical image is much brighter, and shows the beautiful ring structures, which were not detected in X-rays. <laughs> X-ray fluorescence 
Some of the detected X-rays, originating from solar system bodies other than the Sun, are produced by fluorescence. Scattered solar X-rays provide an additional component. In the Rongan satellite image of the Moon, pixel brightness corresponds to X-ray intensity. The bright lunar hemisphere shines in X-rays because it re-emits X-rays originating from the Sun. The background sky has an X-ray glow in part due to the myriad of distant, powerful active galaxies, unresolved in the ROSAT picture. The dark side of the Moon's disk shadows this X-ray background radiation coming from the deep space. A few X-rays only seem to come from the shadowed lunar hemisphere. Instead, they originate in Earth's geocorona or extended atmosphere which surrounds the orbiting X-ray observatory. The measured lunar X-ray luminosity of approximately 1.2 times 105 W makes the Moon one of the weakest known non-terrestrial X-ray source. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Comet detection. NASA's Swift Gamma Ray Burst Mission Satellite was monitoring Comet Lulin as it closed to 63 GM of Earth. For the first time, astronomers can see simultaneous UV and X-ray images of a comet. The solar wind, a fast-moving stream of particles from the Sun, interacts with the comet's broader cloud of atoms. This causes the solar wind to light up with X-rays, and that's what Swift's XRT sees," said Stefan Imler, of the Goddard Space Flight Center. This interaction, called charge exchange, results in X-rays from most comets when they pass within about three times Earth's distance from the Sun. Because Lulin is so active, its atomic cloud is especially dense. As a result, the X-ray emitting region extends far sunward of the comet. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Celestial X-ray sources. The celestial sphere has been divided into 88 constellations. The IAU constellations are areas of the sky. Each of these contains remarkable X-ray sources. Some of them are galaxies or black holes at the centers of galaxies. Some are pulsars. As with the astronomical X-ray sources, striving to understand the generation of X-rays by the apparent source helps to understand the Sun, the universe as a whole, and how these affect us on Earth. <laughs> Andromeda Multiple X-ray sources have been detected in the Andromeda Galaxy, using observations from the ESA's XMM-Newton Orbiting Observatory. <laughs> Boots Three C two hundred and ninety five CL fourteen oh nine plus five hundred and twenty four in Boots is one of the most distant galaxy clusters observed by X ray telescopes. The cluster is filled with a vast cloud of fifty MK gas that radiates strongly in X rays. Chandra observed that the central galaxy is a strong, complex source of X rays. Camelopardalis Hot X-ray emitting gas pervades the galaxy cluster MS0735.6 plus 7421 in Camelopardus. Two vast cavities, each 600,000 lyres in diameter appear on opposite sides of a large galaxy at the center of the cluster. These cavities are filled with a two-sided, elongated, magnetized bubble of extremely high-energy electrons that emit radio waves. Keynes <laughs> Venetici The X-ray landmark NGC 4151, an intermediate spiral Seyfert galaxy has a massive black hole in its core.
Topic: Canis Major. A Chandra X-ray image of Sirius A and B shows Sirius B to be more luminous than Sirius A whereas in the visual range, Sirius A is the more luminous. Cassiopeia Regarding Cassiopeia ASNR, it is believed that first light from the stellar explosion reached Earth approximately 300 years ago but there are no historical records of any sightings of the progenitor supernova, probably due to interstellar dust absorbing optical wavelength radiation before it reached Earth although it is possible that it was recorded as a sixth magnitude star 3 Cassiopeia by John Flamsteed on August 16, 1680. Possible explanations lean toward the idea that the Saw star was unusually massive and had previously ejected much of its outer layers. These outer layers would have cloaked the star and reabsorbed much of the light released as the inner star collapsed. CTA-1 is another SNR X-ray source in Cassiopeia. A pulsar in the CTA-1 supernova remnant initially emitted radiation in the X-ray bands Strangely, when it was observed at a later time X-ray radiation was not detected. Instead, the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope detected the pulsar was emitting gamma ray radiation, the first of its kind. Topic: Carina. Three structures around Eta Carinae are thought to represent shock waves produced by matter rushing away from the superstar at supersonic speeds. The temperature of the shock-heated gas ranges from 60 Mk in the central regions to 3 Mk on the horseshoe-shaped outer structure. The Chandra image contains some puzzles for existing ideas of how a star can produce such hot and intense X-rays," says Professor. Chris Davidson of the University of Minnesota. Cetus Abel 400 is a galaxy cluster, containing a galaxy NGC 1128 with two supermassive black holes 3C75 spiraling towards merger. <laughs> Chameleon The Chameleon Complex is a large star-forming region SFR that includes the Chameleon I, Chameleon II, and Chameleon III dark clouds. It occupies nearly all of the constellation and overlaps into Apis, Musca, and Carina. The mean density of X-ray sources is about one source per square degree. Chameleon I dark cloud The Chameleon I cloud is a coronal cloud and one of the nearest active star formation regions at approximately 160%. It is relatively isolated from other star forming clouds, so it is unlikely that older pre main sequence stars have drifted into the field. The total stellar population is 200 to 300. The Char I cloud is further divided into the North Cloud or Region and South Cloud or Main Cloud. <laughs> Chameleon II Dark Cloud The Chameleon II Dark Cloud contains some 40 X-ray sources. Observation in Chameleon II was carried out from September 10 to 17, 1993. Source RXJ 1301.9-7706, a new WTTS candidate of spectral type K1, is closest to 4U1302-77. Topic: <laughs> Chameleon 3 dark cloud. 
Chameleon 3 appears to be devoid of current star formation activity. HD 104237 spectral type A4E observed by ASCA, located in the Chameleon 3 dark cloud, is the brightest Herbig Air, B star in the sky. <laughs> Corona Borealis The galaxy cluster Abel 2142 emits X-rays and is in Corona Borealis. It is one of the most massive objects in the universe. Corvus <coughs> 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 From the Chandra X-ray analysis of the antennae galaxy's rich deposits of neon, magnesium, and silicon were discovered. These elements are among those that form the building blocks for habitable planets. The clouds image contain magnesium and silicon at 16 and 24 times respectively, the abundance in the Sun. Crater. The jet exhibited in X-rays coming from PKS 1127-145 is likely due to the collision of a beam of high-energy electrons with microwave photons. <laughs> Draco The Draco Nebula a soft X -ray shadow is outlined by contours and is blue-black in the image by ROSAT of a portion of the constellation Draco. Abel 2256 is a galaxy cluster of greater than 500 galaxies. The double structure of this ROSAT image shows the merging of two clusters. Eridanus Within the constellations Orion and Eridanus and stretching across them is a soft X-ray hot spot, known as the Orion Eridanus Superbubble, the Eridanus Soft X-ray Enhancement, or simply the Eridanus Bubble, a 25 degrees area of interlocking arcs of H-alpha emitting filaments. Hydra A large cloud of hot gas extends throughout the Hydra A galaxy cluster. Leo Minor ARP 260 is an X-ray source in Leo Minor at Ra 10 hours 49 minutes 52.5 seconds deck plus 32 degrees 59 minutes 6 seconds. Orion In the adjacent images are the constellation Orion. On the right side of the images is the visual image of the constellation. On the left is Orion as seen in X-rays only. Betelgeuse is easily seen above the three stars of Orion's belt on the right. The brightest object in the visual image is the full moon, which is also in the X-ray image. The X-ray colors represent the temperature of the X-ray emission from each star. Hot stars are blue-white and cooler stars are yellow-red. Topic: <inaudible> Pegasus. Stefan's quintet are of interest because of their violent collisions. Four of the five galaxies in Stefan's Quintet form a physical association, and are involved in a cosmic dance that most likely will end with the galaxies merging. As NGC 7318b collides with gas in the group, a huge shock wave bigger than the Milky Way spreads throughout the medium between the galaxies, heating some of the gas to temperatures of millions of degrees where they emit X rays detectable with the NASA Chandra X ray observatory. NGC 7319 has a type II Seyfert nucleus. Topic: 
Topic: Perseus. The Perseus Galaxy Cluster is one of the most massive objects in the universe, containing thousands of galaxies immersed in a vast cloud of multi-million degree gas. Topic: Picta. Picta A is a galaxy that may have a black hole at its center which has emitted magnetized gas at extremely high speed. The bright spot at the right in the image is the head of the jet. As it plows into the tenuous gas of intergalactic space, it emits X-rays. Picta A is X-ray source designated H0517-456 and 3U0510-44. Topic: Puppies. Puppies A is a supernova remnant (SNR) about 10 light years in diameter. The supernova occurred approximately 3,700 years ago. Topic: Sagittarius. The galactic center is at 1745 to 2900 which corresponds to Sagittarius A asterisk very near to radio source Sagittarius A W24 In probably the first catalog of galactic X-ray sources two SGRX1s are suggested one at 1744 to 2312 and two at 1755 to 2912 noting that two is an uncertain identification source one seems to correspond to S11 topic <laughs> sculptor The unusual shape of the Cartwheel Galaxy may be due to a collision with a smaller galaxy such as those in the lower left of the image. The most recent star burst star formation due to compression waves has lit up the Cartwheel Rim, which has a diameter larger than the Milky Way. There is an exceptionally large number of black holes in the rim of the galaxy as can be seen in the inset. Topic: Serpens. As of August 27, 2007, discoveries concerning asymmetric iron line broadening and their implications for relativity have been a topic of much excitement. With respect to the asymmetric iron line broadening, Edward Cackett of the University of Michigan commented, "We're seeing the gas whipping around just outside the neutron star's surface." And since the inner part of the disk obviously can't orbit any closer than the neutron star's surface, these measurements give us a maximum size of the neutron star's diameter. The neutron stars can be no larger than 18 to 20.5 miles across, results that agree with other types of measurements. We've seen these asymmetric lines from many black holes, but this is the first confirmation that neutron stars can produce them as well. It shows that the way neutron stars accrete matter is not very different from that of black holes, and it gives us a new tool to probe Einstein's theory," says Todd Stromayer of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. This is fundamental physics says Sudip Bhattacharya also of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland and the University of Maryland. There could be exotic kinds of particles or states of matter, such as quark matter, in the centers of neutron stars, but it's impossible to create them in the lab. The only way to find out is to understand neutron stars. Using XMM Newton, Bartikaria and Stromayer observed Serpens X1, which contains a neutron star and a stellar companion. Cackett and John Miller of the University of Michigan, along with Bartikaria and Stromayer, used Suzaku's superb spectral capabilities to survey Serpens X1. 
The Suzaku data confirmed the XMM Newton result regarding the iron line in Serpens X1. Topic: <laughs> Ursa Major. M82 X1 is in the constellation Ursa Major at 09h 55 meters 50.01s plus 69 degrees 40 minutes 46.0 seconds. It was detected in January 2006 by the Rossi X-ray Timing Explorer. In Ursa Major at Ra 10 hours 34 minutes 0 hundred deck plus 57 degrees 40 0 hundred is a field of view that is almost free of absorption by neutral hydrogen gas within the Milky Way. It is known as the Lockman Hole. Hundreds of X-ray sources from other galaxies, some of them supermassive black holes, can be seen through this window. <laughs> <laughs> Exotic X-ray sources Microquasar <laughs> 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 A microquasar is a smaller cousin of a quasar that is a radio-emitting X-ray binary, with an often resolvable pair of radio jets. SS-433 is one of the most exotic star systems observed. It is an eclipsing binary with the primary either a black hole or neutron star and the secondary is a late A-type star. SS-433 lies within SNRW50. The material in the jet traveling from the secondary to the primary does so at 26% of light speed. The spectrum of SS-433 is affected by Doppler shifts and by relativity. When the effects of the Doppler shift are subtracted, there is a residual redshift which corresponds to a velocity of about 12,000 kps. This does not represent an actual velocity of the system away from the Earth, rather, it is due to time dilation, which makes moving clocks appear to stationary observers to be ticking more slowly. In this case, the relativistically moving excited atoms in the jets appear to vibrate more slowly and their radiation thus appears redshifted. BX ray binaries LSI plus 61 degrees 303 is a periodic, radio-emitting binary system that is also the gamma ray source, CG135 plus 01. LSI plus 61 degrees 303 is a variable radio source characterized by periodic, non-thermal radio outbursts with a period of 26.5 d, attributed to the eccentric orbital motion of a compact object probably a neutron star, around a rapidly rotating BOV star, with a TEF approximately 26,000 K and luminosity of tilde 1038 erg S-1. Photometric observations at optical and infrared wavelengths also show a 26.5 d modulation. Of the 20 or so members of the BX ray binary systems, as of 1996, only X per and LSI plus 61 degrees 303 have X ray outbursts of much higher luminosity and harder spectrum KT approximately 10 to 20 keV vs KT 1 keV. However, LSI plus 61 degrees 303 further distinguishes itself by its strong outbursting radio emission. The radio properties of LSI plus 61 degrees 303 are similar to those of the standard high-mass X-ray binaries such as SS-433, CYGX3 and Circle X1. <laughs> Supergiant fast X-ray transients SFXTs. 
There are a growing number of recurrent X-ray transients, characterized by short outbursts with very fast rise times tens of minutes and typical durations of a few hours that are associated with obsupergiants and hence define a new class of massive X-ray binaries, supergiant fast X-ray transients SFXTs. XTEJ1739302 is one of these. Discovered in 1997, remaining active only one day, with an X-ray spectrum well fitted with a thermal bremsstrahlung temperature of 20 keV, resembling the spectral properties of accreting pulsars, it was at first classified as a peculiar B, X-ray transient with an unusually short outburst. A new burst was observed on April 8, 2008 with SWIFT. Topic: Messier 87. Observations made by Chandra indicate the presence of loops and rings in the hot X-ray emitting gas that surrounds Messier 87. These loops and rings are generated by variations in the rate at which material is ejected from the supermassive black hole in jets. The distribution of loops suggests that minor eruptions occur every six million years. One of the rings, caused by a major eruption, is a shock wave 85,000 light-years in diameter around the black hole. Other remarkable features observed include narrow X-ray emitting filaments up to 100,000 light-years long, and a large cavity in the hot gas caused by a major eruption 70 million years ago. The galaxy also contains a notable active galactic nucleus AGN that is a strong source of multi-wavelength radiation, particularly radio waves. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Magnetas. A magneta is a type of neutron star with an extremely powerful magnetic field, the decay of which powers the emission of copious amounts of high-energy electromagnetic radiation, particularly X-rays and gamma rays. The theory regarding these objects was proposed by Robert Duncan and Christopher Thompson in 1992, but the first recorded burst of gamma rays thought to have been from a magneta was on March 5, 1979. These magnetic fields are hundreds of thousands of times stronger than any man-made magnet, and quadrillions of times more powerful than the field surrounding Earth. As of 2003, they are the most magnetic objects ever detected in the universe. On March 5, 1979, after dropping probes into the atmosphere of Venus, Venera 11 and Venera 12, while in heliocentric orbits, were hit at 10:51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time by a blast of gamma ray radiation. This contact raised the radiation readings on both the probe's CONUS experiments from a normal 100 counts per second to over 200,000 counts a second, in only a fraction of a millisecond. This giant flare was detected by numerous spacecraft and with these detections was localized by the Interplanetary Network to SGR 0526 inside the N49 SNR of the Large Magellanic Cloud and, CONUS detected another source in March 1979, SGR 1900 plus 14, located 20,000 light-years away in the constellation Aquila had a long period of low emissions, except the significant burst in 1979, and a couple after. What is the evolutionary relationship between pulsars and magnetars? Astronomers would like to know if magnetas represent a rare class of pulsars, or if some or all pulsars go through a magneta phase during their life cycles. NASA's Rossi X-ray Timing Explorer has revealed that the youngest known pulsing neutron star has thrown a temper tantrum. The collapsed star occasionally unleashes powerful bursts of X-rays, which are forcing astronomers to rethink the life cycle of neutron stars. We are watching one type of neutron star literally change into another right before our very eyes. This is a long-sought missing link between different types of pulsars. 
says Fotis Gavriel of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, and the University of Maryland, Baltimore. PSRJ1846-0258 is in the constellation Aquila. It had been classed as a normal pulsar because of its fast spin and pulsar-like spectrum. RXTE caught four magneta-like X-ray bursts on May 31, 2006, and another on July 27, 2006. Although none of these events lasted longer than 0.14 second, they all packed the wallop of at least 75,000 suns. Never before has a regular pulsar been observed to produce magneta bursts," says Gavriel. Young, fast-spinning pulsars were not thought to have enough magnetic energy to generate such powerful bursts," says Marjorie Gonzalez, formerly of McGill University in Montreal, Canada, now based at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Here's a normal pulsar that's acting like a magneta. The observations from NASA's Chandra X ray Observatory showed that the object had brightened in X rays, confirming that the bursts were from the pulsar, and that its spectrum had changed to become more magneta like. The fact that PSRJ 1846's spin rate is decelerating also means that it has a strong magnetic field breaking the rotation. The implied magnetic field is trillions of times stronger than Earth's field, but it's 10 to 100 times weaker than a typical magneta. Victoria Caspi of McGill University notes, PSRJ 1846's actual magnetic field could be much stronger than the measured amount, suggesting that many young neutron stars classified as pulsars might actually be magnetas in disguise, and that the true strength of their magnetic field only reveals itself over thousands of years as they ramp up in activity. X-ray dark stars During the solar cycle, as shown in the sequence of images of the Sun in X-rays, the Sun is almost X-ray dark, almost an X-ray variable. Betelgeuse, on the other hand, appears to be always X-ray dark. The X-ray flux from the entire stellar surface corresponds to a surface flux limit that ranges from 30–7000 ergs s minus 1 cm minus 2 at t equals 1 mk, to approximately 1 erg s minus 1 cm minus 2 at higher temperatures, five orders of magnitude below the quiet Sun X-ray surface flux, like the red supergiant Betelgeuse, hardly any X-rays are emitted by red giants. The cause of the X-ray deficiency may involve a turn-off of the dynamo, a suppression by competing wind production, or strong attenuation by an overlying thick chromosphere. Prominent bright red giants include Aldebaran, Arcturus, and Gamma Crucis. There is an apparent X-ray dividing line in the HR diagram among the giant stars as they cross from the main sequence to become red giants. Alpha Trianguli Australis Alpha Tra, Alpha Trianguli Australis appears to be a hybrid star parts of both sides in the «dividing line» of evolutionary transition to red giant, Alpha Tra can serve to test the several dividing line models. There is also a rather abrupt onset of X-ray emission around spectral type A7F0, with a large range of luminosities developing across spectral class F in the few genuine late A or early F-type coronal emitters. Their weak dynamo operation is generally not able to break the rapidly spinning star considerably during their short lifetime, so that these coronae are conspicuous by their severe deficit of X-ray emission compared to chromospheric and transition region fluxes, the latter can be followed up to mid-A type stars at quite high levels. Whether or not these atmospheres are indeed heated acoustically and drive an expanding 
weak and cool corona or whether they are heated magnetically. The X ray deficit and the low coronal temperatures clearly attest to the inability of these stars to maintain substantial, hot coronae in any way comparable to cooler active stars, their appreciable chromospheres notwithstanding. X-ray interstellar medium The hot ionized medium him, sometimes consisting of coronal gas, in the temperature range 106 to 107 K emits X-rays Stellar winds from young clusters of stars often with giant or supergiant HII regions surrounding them and shock waves created by supernovae inject enormous amounts of energy into their surroundings, which leads to hypersonic turbulence. The resultant structures, of varying sizes, can be observed, such as stellar wind bubbles and superbubbles of hot gas, by X-ray satellite telescopes. The Sun is currently traveling through the local interstellar cloud, a denser region in the low-density local bubble. <laughs> Diffuse X-ray background In addition to discrete sources which stand out against the sky, there is good evidence for a diffuse X-ray background. During more than a decade of observations of X-ray emission from the Sun, evidence of the existence of an isotropic X-ray background flux was obtained in 1956. This background flux is rather consistently observed over a wide range of energies. The early high-energy end of the spectrum for this diffuse X-ray background was obtained by instruments on board Ranger 3 and Ranger 5. The X-ray flux corresponds to a total energy density of about 5 by 10 minus 4 electron volts per cc. The ROSAT soft X-ray diffuse background SXRB image shows the general increase in intensity from the galactic plane to the poles. At the lowest energies, 0.1 to 0.3 keV, nearly all of the observed soft X-ray background SXRB is thermal emission from approximately 106 K plasma. By comparing the soft X-ray background with the distribution of neutral hydrogen, it is generally agreed that within the Milky Way disk, super-soft X-rays are absorbed by this neutral hydrogen. X-ray dark planets X-ray observations offer the possibility to detect X-ray dark planets as they eclipse part of the corona of their parent star while in transit. Such methods are particularly promising for low-mass stars as a Jupiter-like planet could eclipse a rather significant coronal area. Earth The first picture of the Earth in X-rays was taken in March 1996, with the orbiting polar satellite. Energetically charged particles from the Sun cause aurora and energize electrons in the Earth's magnetosphere. These electrons move along the Earth's magnetic field and eventually strike the Earth's ionosphere, producing the X-ray emission. Topic. See also Astronomical radio source